Good morning, everybody. Um, I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos that we had a freezer go down. Well, it died. Yeah. So we looked around at different options and we were originally going to try and get it repaired. Well, it cost more to repair it than what we paid for it. So we found a local company that had a much larger capacity freezer and not only could we get a 16 foot freezer instead of a seven square foot um, cubic square foot freezer, we would have a 16 foot freezer. They would take the old one that was broken and we still have the black one, the itty bitty tiny baby one that we've had for two decades, a brand new one that we bought thinking that we were just going to switch them out until we realized that we couldn't just give the freezer away. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is actually new. It will not be plugged in unless we need it for a backup in case, God forbid, something happens. And then this is the other seven foot one that we originally had. And here is the new baby. And the new baby is big, 16 cubic square feet. And I am in the process of rearranging, organizing, and getting happy here. I, I'm going to have quite a bit more space in this one. So I'm going to be putting all of the meats in this one freezer. So yeah, pork, chicken, beef, turkey, all of the heavy hitters, probably the seafood as well, any fish, that kind of thing. So um, this is going to be my day today of transferring all the goodness and trying to organize and then eventually this well this weekend not eventually this weekend again this this new one that we've just unboxed that's going to be our backup reserve and this one over here is our original chest freezer and it will actually be going up into the garage where I can store the freezer meals that we've made together and as I go that way, because I always uh, flash freeze every freezer meal before I put it into any kind of long-term storage because I don't want the containers to collapse. I don't want them to get misshapen. I don't want the contents to get squished. So I freeze them first, then long-term storage. Well, that's caused a problem with another family member and their freezer space. So we decided we're going to take our original little guy, park that in the garage, and that's going to be the per the permanent home of all freezer meals and like bags of ice. So that's what's happening with this guy this weekend. And this one is going to become the, the produce freezer. So anything out of the garden, any fruits and vegetables, you know, any kind of, um, so all of the produce vegetables, any bulk items we find at the local farms. And I'm also going to store in here anything like, oh, you know, odds and ends like uh, bags of candy or say I want to make um, pies or freeze a cake or something like that. This is going to be the one that we use that for. So I will be right back as I go and show you my progress. All right, we have made some pretty gosh darn good progress. Now this 16 footer, 16 foot, yeah, yeah, the 16 cubic square foot freezer now has all meats. It's got turkey, it's got chicken, it's got beef back here, pork, all the pork chops, whole chickens, that kind of thing. Over here, beef liver. Um, this is all pretty much beef liver. Um, I'm anemic, so I eat a lot of beef liver. And then over here, and I love this, it slides. There's a second basket I haven't decided if I'm going to use yet. We've got chicken gizzards. I'm in the south. We do that. And we've got things like chicken livers, um, some sausage, and our, our sad two-pound lonely package of ground beef. I desperately need to replenish this. So we've got the meats, I think, corralled. I think we're looking good there. Over here, I have started finally restocking this. This is all seafood, fish, shrimp, that kind of thing, and french fries. I'm going to make this more about veggies and seafood for this one. So, I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I think we got a final tally, at least for today. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be moving a smaller freezer up to the garage. But in the big new one, 
I did end up using the second basket and this is all pork that needs to be rendered into lard. That's all what this is here. Again, some random chicken wings um, and then the rest is liver. And oh, let's see if I can scoot that over. We've got all this stuff that hasn't changed. Added some bacon in here that I came across. And then I did find another package of chicken. So this freezer for the time being is done. So moving over to this seven cubic foot one. As you can see, a lot of garden vegetables, store-bought vegetables. I have underneath here, the squash that I preserved, uh, peppers uh, that I preserved, some, like I said, some store-bought things. I did find my other mahi-mahi filet that I still have not portioned out. And over here, like I said, um, a lot of the french fries and then all the seafood. So we've got squid, we've got tuna, we've got shrimp, we've got all the, all the things there. And for right now, I have uh, like my uh, pasta, some puff pastry in here. Um, and this one again is not plugged in yet. This guy here is going up in the garage and that is going to be for freezer meals. So for the time being, we're gonna put them back over here until we can get this guy moved. And in here, I have put some smaller things like st uh, a, a batch of stuffing that I did at Thanksgiving that is preserved and uh, vacuum sealed. And in here, I have all of my soups, my chilies. I freeze those flat to save on space. And I've got some turkey patties down here, some miscellaneous stuff that is not going to stay in here, I don't think but we're working on that. And underneath all of that is all those jalapeno poppers we made together. So I think we've got it together here for the time being. I've got some things that need to go in the garbage. Not much, thank goodness. We did get on that and we didn't lose anything. And I think that's about it for today. Thank you everyone for joining me. I'm glad that I was blessed enough to get through this crisis of having a freezer go down and not losing anything. So just a word to the wise, always check your freezers, make sure the lids are closed, make sure that they're freezing properly. Do a daily check and at least a monthly maintenance of, you know, check the ice buildup, check your product, keep an eye on things. All right, love you guys, take care and I'll see you on the next side. Bye-bye. Hello again, everyone. Well, we survived the freezer frenzy of trying to get new freezers, move things into new freezers, organize the old ones. It, it was, it was fun, but it looks like tomorrow we finally have a game plan to finish moving where everything's going to be long term. And I'm tired, but I still have to make dinner. And this time it's just dinner for me. I'm going to be able to freeze quite a bit of this. So I'm pretty excited. It's a super simple, straightforward dinner and it's chicken Parmesan minus the Parmesan because all I have is mozzarella. Although it's popular to, to use mozzarella, I'm only going to be using mozzarella because I just don't have any Parmesan. So we're making chicken mozzarella, I guess. <laughs> so I've got my dredging dish, my final building resting dish. I've got chicken. I've got my mozzarella. I've got a bag back here to put my breadcrumbs in to shake the chicken pieces in. Got my cast iron skillet. I've got my seasonings, salt, garlic, onion, my breadcrumbs, milk, vegetable oil, and Italian seasoning, and salt, and my, I'm just doing a jar of Prego sauce tonight. I'm good with that. So, we are going to get busy and start prepping the chicken, and I'm probably going to take this chicken, it's a fairly large package, and I'm probably going to take these breasts and slice them lengthwise in half. They'll cook faster and more bang for my buck. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my giddy up here. I put some gloves on, you know, it's just easier. I have them and I use them frequently when I'm dealing with large projects, that kind of thing. change of plans. My entire package of chicken is bad. Okay. 
Okay. That sucks pretty hard. That is a very expensive package of chicken. Well, there's not a lot I can do about that. It has gone bad. Okay. All right. Let me reformat and rethink this, and I will be right back. Okay. I have disposed of the chicken. That was a very unfortunate thing. I was well within the use-by range, and yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's been experiencing this where there has been a lot of talk in the past and recent past about grocery stores relabeling products to extend saleability for want of a better term. I still had four days before the best buy or use by date and it was already bad and I just got it yesterday. So I guess folks all I can tell you is it does happen, but to be mindful of your expiration dates, and I guess these days, if you're not going to use it right away, uh, portion it and give it the freezer or put the whole thing in the freezer. It's the only thing I can think of to at least hedge your bets and preserve what you're spending your hard-earned money on. Having said that, I have come up with a solution. So I have rewashed my cutting board. I have rewashed my knife. I went down and I got out of the freezer these chicken thighs. Yes, they're bone in. I actually am okay with that. It's fine. It will be just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the microwave to defrost. Use the defrost setting. We're going to do that. And then I will be back once these are ready to go and we will move on with our dinner tonight. Okay. We have adapted and we have overcome. Okay. So Got the chicken defrosted. Um, they're smaller thighs, but there's about um, eight, no, there's six of them, three per bag. I'm going to go ahead and just move on with the exact same recipe I was gonna do, which I'm not even sure it really qualifies as a recipe. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this uh, started dredging and doing all the happy things for it. Okay, we are back and the skillet is heating up nicely and our chicken over here, I put a paper towel over it. I've got a pesky gnat flying around in here in February, which I do not appreciate. Why it's even alive, I do not know. But we are about ready to start putting the oil in and get frying. I just want to take a quick moment and say thank you everyone for being here and spending time with me. And thank you for just being a part of my world. And, you know, what happened earlier, it suddenly occurred to me that I could have started recording over again and just went with the chicken thighs like I planned to do that all along. But I'm very much very down to earth and very transparent. And I do not mind sharing my mishaps along with my successes with you. I think it's very important because... Nobody's perfect, circumstances are never perfect, and goofy things happen sometimes. So, But thank you all for being here with me. This is fun. And my mood has improved. We have saved dinner. I'm going to have a nice meal tonight, plus a ton of leftovers, and I'm pretty excited about that. So this has been heating for about six minutes on medium. Uh, keep in mind, again, we're not cooking this chicken all the way through. I've got my oven set at 350. It's about to heat up. It may or may not beep. I don't know if it will or not tonight. It's been, my beep has been going out. Um, and so we're going to brown it and then we're going to finish it in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and add some oil. We're not doing a deep fry. We are just basically covering the bottom, probably by yeah, a quarter of an inch. And you can see my oil is rippling a little bit, so that means it's, oh, it beeped, yay. So we're gonna take that paper towel off. This has been sitting for the same amount of time we've been heating that skillet, so we're looking good. So I'm just gonna take my tongs and hopefully be able to pick these up. And I'm gonna start from the skin side down. And I don't have my sizzle yet, bummer. I thought it was already there, that's okay. I'll stop there, I'll let it keep heating, 
and when it starts sizzling, then I'm going to put the other two pieces in, and I'm just going to go three at a time because I don't want to overcrowd the pan. And this is a nine inch cast iron. We should do a cast iron video. I've got some interesting stories about how I obtained mine. Um, these are eh, pretty close to 100 years old. And I have, uh, yeah, I've got like four that pertain to the fun stories. And this is one of them. So we'll have to do that sometime. We can go over how to season and where to find cast iron that's cheap and how to refurbish it and get it back up to its glory. I think it would be fun. We should do that. So I'm starting to get a little bit of bubbles here. So, okay, we're finally getting up to some heat here. Okay, it's bubbling. It's just not sizzling yet. Dang it. That's okay. Yeah, it's starting to make noise. Okay. So, like I said, I'm only going to put in, if I can get my tongs under the darn thing, I'm only going to put in three at a time. Oh, there goes the crumb mess. And by the way, cooking on a glass cooktop with cast iron is perfectly fine. What you don't want to do is be scooting it all over. It's like when you know, you're know you using your canner and you have a glass cook cooktop. It's perfectly fine. Um, they can hold a considerable amount of weight. And what you don't want to do is, like I said, is play shuffleboard with it on your glass cooktop. Because that will scratch it badly. But yeah, don't don't worry about it. It's fine. Just use your common sense that I know you all have, and you're good to go. You're not gonna have a problem. So let's. Oh, that one's kind of laying in the other one. Let's not do that. That's my skillet. Goes on a spin. But it's a happy skillet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these cook for probably like five minutes per side, and then that's gonna be it. And that'll be enough to get some really good color. And then over to our pan here. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. I know this is going to be shocking to you. But I'm going to do the majority of the baking of, of the actual meat in the sauce without the cheese. I know. I know. I know. I said it. But there is a good reason for that. Rather than covering it and things getting steamy instead of cooked all the way through, and I don't want that cheese to get overcooked, which it very well will, I want to cook it at 350, which is a little bit lower temperature. It's going to be probably a good 35 minutes. And so probably, <clears throat> excuse me, the last 15 minutes, I will put the cheese on. And don't worry, I will put a lot of cheese on it. <laughs> so I'm going to get these uh, happy in the skillet here, about five minutes per side, and I'll be right back. I just wanted to share this with you. I just flipped the chicken, and this just instantly took me back to my childhood with my grandma. She always did her fried chicken in a skillet. And I just, and it's funny too, because this is her skillet. This is one of hers. I just, I, it was one of those, I got, I got goosebumps kind of moments. It just, it took me back. I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. These are ready to transfer to the pan over here. I have added just a very light layer of my sauce. Oop, the macro pan. There's very little oil coming off these. I'm not worried about it. Just let them do a little drippy drip. And just kind of fit them in. There you go. There we go. Actually, I think I was really worried that this pan I'm using was going to be way too big, but actually, I think it's going to be the perfect size. I really do. So, we're going to put in our next round. Get them all happy and positioned here. All right, so I'll start again, skin side down. Set my timer for five minutes, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our brown pieces of chicken, and they are so pretty. And I got to cook them in my grandma's skillet. <laughs> so awesome. So my oven is set at 350, and all I'm going to do at this point is add some more sauce. Just enough to cover each piece just enough 
and we'll see what we've got left here. Because I don't want soup. I want my chicken mozzarella minus the parm thing. Yeah. So that looks pretty good. And I think what I'm going to do, that is what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to take and set aside the rest of my sauce. There's about a quarter of a jar left. These are nicely covered, not too much, not too little. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in the oven, like I said, at 350, and I'm going to cook it for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take it out, then I'm going to add the rest of the sauce, then the cheese, then, then the cheese. And then I'm going to finish cooking it for probably another 15 minutes, maybe 20. These are kind of, I thought they were really tiny, but no, these are pretty good sized chicken thighs, so... It could take as much as 45 minutes at 350. So I'm gonna get them in the oven, set my timer for 20 minutes, come back, take a look, assess, and we're gonna go from there. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I took the chicken's temperature. He's yummy. And it is looking very, very lovely. I am going to go ahead and add the rest of my sauce now. It's been in for a little over 20 minutes, and it looks like I have about 20 more minutes to go. So what I'm going to do is just finish topping this loveliness off. I did a bit more. Okay. That emptied out and I've got about 20 more minutes probably 25 because it's been out I'm going to go I think another oops you don't need paper towel I think I'm going to go another probably 10 minutes and then I'm going to put the cheese on it and cover it loosely with some aluminum foil. So we'll go ahead, get that timer going, and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, we are back, and my timer is about to go off. Um, it's down to less than 30 seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and kill it, and we're going to see what we've got. I went ahead and added the cheese, covered it, and did all the things. And it sounds very bubbly and lovely in there. Do this without burning myself. That would be a bonus. Okay. All right, we're gonna see this together. Oh. Wow. Let me bring you around here. Behold. That's pretty happy looking, guys. I'm excited. Let's take its temperature. Be sure we are cooked all the way through. Let me find a spot here. Okay. Yep, yeah, we are up to temp. We are good. Okay. Now see that, even though it says it's at 175, It's still leaking out a little bit of blood. So I think actually I'm going to go ahead, even though the temp is right, I'm going to put it back in for just a few more minutes and let that finish going all the way through. I'll be right back. All right, everybody, we did it. We did it. We finished the glory. <laughs> I take its little temperature again, and it is fully cooked. Um, the cheese is just slightly golden brown. I'm going to dish this up and have a very pleasant dinner probably a glass of wine, maybe three. Thank you again for joining me tonight, and thank you for just hanging out with me. I always have a good time with you around, and I look forward to seeing you next time, guys. If you want, tell a friend, like, subscribe, come on back and see me. I always have a good time when you guys are around. Take care. Bye-bye.